All right, what is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I've actually got a clip from the CHB podcast, which I want to kind of show to you guys, but also kind of make an announcement before this clip starts, that I actually will be starting up a brand new channel where I will actually be dedicating all the clips to the CHB podcast and kind of just putting on, you know, putting all of them on there for you guys to, of course, go and check out. Again, every time I release a podcast, I'm hoping that maybe you know, three to five or so clips from that podcast can be taken out. I will be interviewing other people like this and making more podcasts with other people like this too. So if you guys enjoyed it, you know, definitely let me know. But of course, if you haven't already, go and check out the full podcast and subscribe to my new channel, which I will all be linking in the description down below. But I guess without further ado, enjoy the clip. But the next thing is, you know, you're a big Indiana Pacers fan. One of your former players has actually been training with the Golden State Warriors and doing some workouts for them in Darren Collison. Should the Warriors sign Darren Collison, do you reckon he'd still be good enough to be an NBA player? And uh, like, there's been rumors that I think it's uh, it could be a money issue as well. Apparently, if he wants to come back, he wants like a two-year deal maybe with some money attached to it. Do you think, what do you think about it? Should he come back? Oh, yeah. Well, he's been out of the league for a few years now, which is kind of surprising. He's still only 34 and players are getting older and older and not regressing nowadays. But, um, yeah, I definitely think think he could fit in at the Warriors, be a good presence around the locker room. He is a good three-point shooter. I loved having him in Indiana. Uh, it was pretty sad to see him go, to be honest. He grew on me a lot in his time there. Uh yeah, I'd honestly really like to see him there. Come off the bench, he can have a few good minutes a game, I think. And mm. uh, yeah, I certainly wouldn't be opposed to it if I was both him or the Warriors. Yeah, I think... Well, didn't he average like 12, 6, and 4 or something with like 40-something percent from three in his last season with Indiana? Like, that's that's insane. Like, think about it. Like, he's had a couple of years off. This guy's probably not going to come back as like what, a 34-year-old or whatever he is now. He's probably going to come back as, like, a 32-year-old, 33-year-old. But he's, yeah, I reckon he's going to be definitely ready. definitely has some years added to his career. Yeah, 100%. I, I think, I'm pretty sure there were a couple of things that he retired for. I'm pretty sure there was a mental health issue. But the second thing was, I'm pretty sure it was a religious thing from a member inside. I could be yeah, wrong Yeah, it was religious reasons yeah. for him retiring. But how would, like, if you're going to come out of retirement, how does your religious, you know, reasons change from then to now? Like, uh, that confuses me a little bit. Yeah, uh, well, who knows? He will definitely be fresh, and he's yeah. probably gotten, like, that fire to come back. I mean, maybe, who knows what could have happened in his personal mm. life. But, yeah, I I don't really know how that could change yeah. or what has changed, or I don't think anyone does. But, yeah, he was certainly solid. He was a great three-point shooter, especially his first year in Indiana. He mm. shot, like, 45 46%, which was just amazing to have that three-point presence in our team, which uh, we have seen a bit more in recent years. So, yeah, I, I really think he could be very useful for the Warriors and get some good minutes in. Yeah, you guys just really replaced him with, like, a 10 times better version, though, in Malcolm Brogdon. Like, Brogdon, oh, yeah. wow, he's been insane. Like, they, in my opinion, I don't know, this might be just me, but I think they're a little bit similar, to be honest. Like, you really just replaced a dude that, you know, can be a good scorer, can be a really good defender as well here and there, but also, like, a really good shooter. Whether it's catch and shoot, you know, being a shot creator. I think you guys did pretty well with that kind of move. But, like, think about it right now. The Golden State Warriors... They really don't have a backup point guard. Like, apparently Jordan Poole is going to play most of the year as a backup, as their backup point guard. But then, like, let's just say Poole or Curry, one of them gets injured. Their next best option is Chris Chioza, who's on a two-way contract. Like, they need, a next, they need another point guard, in my opinion. I can't see why Collison, you know, he'd be, he'd be the perfect option, I reckon. Yeah, 100%. That's what I was thinking. They really don't have anyone at the backup position, and... He should be very fresh and be able to at least have a good season in him. And who knows, his career could be pushed on for a couple more years anyway. And hey, what do you reckon the money situation would be? Because I, I believe the Warriors have a mid-level exception. So... Yeah, I mean, they they could use that on him. I, 
obviously he's not going to get a, an amazing contract mm-hmm. and he shouldn't be expecting it. I don't, yes, I agree. I don't think he should be expecting like really much more than a veteran's minimum, but yeah, he clearly wants some exactly money to right. come out of retirement. Could be $4 million yeah. a year. And if that fire is in him, then he will know his worth pretty much and take the lower contract mm. and get back into the league. But um, yeah, obviously, if the money's too much for the Warriors, it, you could definitely look other in other places for another point guard. But Collison would be a really great fit. Yeah. If he wants $4 million, I'm just giving it to him if I'm the Warriors, though. Like, I don't see the issue with it. If it's a two-year deal, then you're probably not going to give it to him. But it's, it's one year, really. It's just like... Yeah, if you're getting him one year, four million, he could he could add a fair bit to that team. I yeah. certainly wouldn't say no if I was Golden State. Yeah, I agree. I, I guess, well, they haven't signed him. It's been a week since these reports have come out. Hopefully, like, when this podcast and video comes out or whatever that, like, he hasn't signed. I, I guess if not, though, like, if he has signed with them, then... It makes sense that, like, you know, we, we're still talking about him. Like, he is a valuable player. So, either yeah, way, we're certainly. still saying it's a good situation. Um, whether or not he signs with them at the time of this coming out and whether or not he hasn't. I still think he should. And if he has, then good on the Warriors. I'm just in, in keen to see what his contract would actually look like. And if it is the veterans minimum or $4 million or something like that. Yeah. Do you know if there's been any interest from any other teams or is it just Golden State? Well, I think he met up with the Lakers last year. Um, I don't know if you saw that, but he was like with Jeannie Buss or something. But then like yeah, apparently yeah, that I was just a, that. it was like a dinner, but like dude, come on now. Like it's clearly making I mean, it with them for fit, a reason. It's fitting in the Lakers right now. They're they're quite old, but I mean that experience will hopefully give them another championship. Yeah. That's what they're hoping at least. I agree. Do the